Hello Church! Hello everyone who's watching us right now here at the official page of Lagro United Methodist Church Philippines. Welcome to our segment, Hymns from the Heart. Hello everyone! Yes, here we are going to feature church hymns and sacred songs with the heartwarming stories behind them and the inspiring stories of the men and women who wrote them. So that they may not remain as mere hymns we have learned to sing in church, but as hymns from the heart. This is Tito Arnel. And this is Levy. Join us in this segment. Hymns, hymns from, from the, the Heart. heart. Our featured hymn for tonight was from the verses penned by an American Civil War veteran. It was about some grueling questions in life, about the fact that no matter what happens in our lives, we can trust that whatever we commit to the Lord, He is able to keep, even our souls. Our hymn for tonight was entitled, I Know Whom I Have Believed. Whittle fought in the army during the American Civil War and marched with General William Tecumseh Sherman through Georgia. At the end of the war, he was given the title of Major and is still known by many hymnologists as Major Whittle. After the war, Whittle became closely associated with the evangelistic campaigns of the famous Dwight Lyman Moody. In fact, Whittle's daughter married Moody's son. His war experiences served as a basis for the gospel song, Hold the Fourth for I Am Coming by Philip Paul Bliss. According to the biographers, Watson and Young, Major Will, who composed around 200 hymn texts, continued to travel on evangelist tours in North America and Great Britain with Moody and Bliss until his death. Daniel Webster Whittle wrote many hymn lyrics under the pseudonym El Nathan. Thus, this hymn was also given the true name El Nathan. The tune was composed by prominent music publisher and gospel song composer James McGranahan. It was first published in Gospel Hymns, number 4, printed in New York in 1883, edited by a distinguished trio of gospel song musicians and promoters that included Dwight Moody's evangelist Ira D. Sankey, James McGranahan, and George C. Stebbins. This hymn has been extremely popular in the United States, and it can be found in every Southern Baptist hymnal since the Baptist Hymn and Priest Book printed in Nashville in 1904, in the United Methodist Hymnal printed in 1989, as well as in more than 200 other hymnals published in the United States, Canada, and Great Britain. Another gospel hymn by this duo that is well known is Showers of Blessing in 1883, the Cooksbury Hymnal, number 208. The tune of this hymn sounds like a typical gospel tune with modest harmony and simple melodic lines. Dotted rhythms give it some added interest. The tune is written in an easy to sing D major, not too high or not too low for congregational singing, and easily sung in four part harmony. Pero ang lagi nating tanong, paano kaya na isulat ni Major Whittle ang imnong ito? Daniel Webster Whittle's hymn writing is part of the lighter, more emotional age of American gospel music. That's according to Robert Morgan. Whittle was born near Boston, Massachusetts in November of 1840. He left home as a teenager and moved to Chicago, where he worked in a bank. He enlisted to fight in the American Civil War when it began in 1861, getting married the day before he left. 
His wife Abby was distraught when she learned that he had been taken captive and was seriously wounded, having lost his right arm. But God used this circumstance. While recovering in hospital, Daniel grew bored and picked up a New Testament Bible just as something to read. He felt moved by what he read, pero parang hindi pa siya ready accept si Christ as his Savior. So nakatulog siya. Di nagtagal, ginising siya ng isang hospital orderly at sinabing may isang sundalong naghihingalo na naghahanap ng mananalangin para sa kanya. Sabi ni Will, he couldn't do that. Hindi niya kaya yun, kaya maghanap na lang sila ng iba. But the orderly replied that he'd seen him reading the Bible, and so he thought he must be a Christian. Whittle agreed to help out na rin. He knelt by the dying young soldier. While holding his hand, Whittle confessed his own sins and asked the Lord for forgiveness. Whittle later said, I then prayed and pleaded God's promises. When I arose from my knees, he was dead. A look of peace had come over his troubled face, and I cannot believe that God, who used him to bring me to the Savior, used me to lead him to trust Christ's precious blood and find pardon. Daniel Whittle must have grown in faith. In this hymn, I know whom I have believed, was written in 1883 as his testimony of his trust in Jesus. He used Paul's words from his letter to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12, King James Version, as the chorus of the song. We see that Whittle still had questions about spiritual mysteries, but it was knowing Jesus that made the difference to him. Kilala niya si Jesus sa kanyang buhay at alam niyang si Jesus ay tapat sa lahat niyang pangako. Liturgically, and in keeping with its original use in evangelistic gatherings, I know whom I have believed functions well as a response to testimony or as a profession of faith. This hymn can be very uplifting and helpful during times of trouble or when there is a need for renewal of faith. This hymn is a great asset to the repertoire of the United Methodist Church and will continue to be sung in the church for years to come. And so, with no further ado, let us join our hearts together to sing our feature song for tonight, I Know Whom I Have Believed. I'm 
Thank you for joining us tonight. This has been Tito Arnell and Levy here, and this is Hymns from the Heart, a production of the Communications and Web Ministry of Lager United Methodist Church. <laughs>